Dennis Eckersley was wrong. He picked the lowest hanging fruit, went after it, and of course what he said was accurate. Of course it was. But it was classless. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. Comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this. Pirates 8, Red Sox 2, a whole lot of karma for Eck talking trash on the team that ends up keeping the Red Sox from achieving the lofty goal of 500 with a $207 million payroll. But go ahead and talk smack on somebody else. Look, it'd be idiotic to get into some kind of comparison between the Red Sox and the Pirates over recent years, over whatever period of time, okay? That's not the intent here. What I want to make clear is two things. One, the Pirates are fair game to the extreme. No one on God's green earth has been more critical of the 22 Pirates than the person you're currently listening to. And I can't imagine there's even a close second. I wrote a column two mornings ago on DK Pittsburgh Sports that included the term trash in the headline, referring to what had happened to the team this year. Trash. So I'm not exactly hypersensitive to anyone else criticizing the Pirates. But that's missing the point here. And that's missing the point of what upset the people within the Pirates over these past couple days. Here's the fact. You don't do that. Not within the industry. When you're a team employee, you're representing that team. And I understand that Eckersley is going to be done with his broadcasting career this coming October. So maybe he's just feeling like he can do and say anything on the air. But believe you me, his remarks the other night wouldn't have been embraced or applauded by anyone within the Boston organization. I believe that. I really do. For the simple reason that nobody does that. Not as a team employee. You don't speak out ripping some other team. Oh, and hey, by the way, if you're going to do it to the other team, you'd better be very sure you're doing it to your own. The Red Sox are having a terrible season. And again, I'm not sitting here comparing it to a team that's got 20% of their payroll and everything else that's wrong with the Pirates. I talk about that here every day. I don't need to do it again. The Red Sox, in their own right, in their own context, are having a really, really disappointing season. They're in fifth place in their division. They're under 500 with a $207 million payroll. Do you know how hard that is? Do you know what a dubious achievement that is? And you're going to go on the air and rip the other guys. While, according to a few people that I heard from on social media in the New England area, that's something that Eckersley never does related to the team that he's actually paid to cover. Hmm, wonder why. Maybe it's because he's dot 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 a team employee. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. One more time, with clarity, because I know I'm going to get this response to this particular subject. What Eckersley said was accurate and fair game. 
I wasn't wild about him including players in it because, look, it's not the players' fault they are who they are or that the Pirates are picking them up. But what he said was on the mark. That is not my point here. My point is that you don't do that. I don't care if it made people around here happy, especially the ones who hate the pirates. And boy, are there a lot of them. I don't care further that a lot of those people, again, looking at social media last night, seem to actually be displeased that the pirates won this game, never mind that they won it big. Those people, as I've stated many times on this program, for the most part, don't really even follow the Pirates. They just kind of like to chip in whenever something is looking a little bit miserable on this front. It's like, it's like a pastime. I also don't care that, well, boy, what Eckersley said was right and everybody needs to be saying that. It doesn't make any difference. It makes zero difference. If you think that somebody getting on a local broadcast in Boston, regardless of the publicity that it received, is going to have any kind of impact on anyone at 115 Federal other than to tick them off that it was a team employee of the opponent, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're, you're dreaming. You're hoping, oh, this is it. This is Bob Nutting. He's just going to go, oh, no, that's it. That's gone too far. I'm going to sell the team now. He's not moved by hardly anything. And if you really want to know the truth, when he's been moved by criticism, it's been local. It hasn't been from the outside or somewhere else where people go, oh, it's national now. It doesn't make any difference. Pirates are based in Pittsburgh. The owner's based in Pittsburgh. The criticism you're going to hear is going to come from within Pittsburgh. You know, I I did a a whole episode yesterday about what people can do to speak up, what people can do to make a difference. And I got some blowback to that, too. That's your job. It's not. It's not. Reporters cover things. Yes, I have an opinion. Yes, yes. I speak it, but guess what? I never, ever, ever, ever claim to be the voice of anybody else. I'll hear that from listeners who appreciate what they hear because they uh, have a similar viewpoint, but it's never an intent. I only ever speak for one person, and guess what? My voice, no matter how many people will hear it, or how many people will read the words that I write, it's still just one voice. It's still just representing me. And as such, it can very easily be dismissed as that. This was a big thing with the last administration in there. They tried internally to say all kinds of stuff whenever I was calling for them to get fired, that he's this and he's that. And again, that's easy to do. You can just say, hey, that guy's nuts. He's off his rocker. He's this or that. He's unfair. He's mean, whatever. But when there are a lot of people and paying customers going at them, it's a completely different scenario. I can't begin to understand how that point couldn't be clear enough. So I'm going to repeat it today. If you want to go after the pirates, Don't wait for anyone in the media to do it. The media will cover it. The media will amplify it. And for crying out loud, don't hang your hopes on some guy in Boston showing absolutely no class. When we come back, J1Q. comes from Grady, and he asks, DK, with all the verbal abuse that Nutting receives, why does he want to own the Pirates? It's certainly not to make money. (laughs) Wow. Well, you know, I've asked this question, believe it or not, of Bob. I've asked about the criticism that he's gotten that's like way, way, way over the top in a lot of cases, and even his most 
ardent critics would agree that it's over the top. I'm talking about threats and stuff like that. Um, he's aware. He's not exactly the kind of guy that's going to sit there on Twitter and poke around to see how everybody's feeling and why he's trending every other night, which he has, by the way, all this week. But that stuff tends to find a way to filter through. He's got people around him. He's got certain things that he's got to address or respond to, even if it's just internally. And he knows. So you ask, why does he want to do it? And then you say, it's certainly not to make money. That's the stranger part of all this. One of these days, if slash when Nutting sells the team, he's going to make an epic killing. If you look around Major League Baseball and see the prices that have been had very recently, in fact, for teams like the Royals that are similar to the Pirates, although with a lesser ballpark situation, you're talking about way over a billion, billion and a half. It could be even more by the time this were to become real, if it ever does. I don't want to get anybody's hopes up. And he'll have invested probably at the very most in terms of purchases and buying out other minority owners, something in the range of around $200 million. And that includes... All of the original purchases that involved his father and all this other stuff, okay? So, the return will be unimaginable. It'll be spectacular. But the weird part within that is that I know for a fact, I've seen the books, that when the Pirates have profited as an organization, it has not been removed by the principal owner. And I know that because I've spoken with minority owners who have access to all of this information and have to. And for all the things that they say that are negative about him, they never, never, not once, not the ones who've hated him more than anything else have ever said, oh yeah, he's taken that money out. They've always said the opposite. So I further don't get it. Because he's not going to make all this bank until he sells. So there isn't even that. So why is he in it? Now, you're probably wondering, what does he answer whenever I've asked him? And the answer is that he wants to win, meaning that's his answer. I, 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 I know, right? <laughs> so there's so much about this that doesn't make sense. And you're hearing this from somebody who has... A lot more information slash access than most people. There's a lot that just doesn't add up. And him saying that, you know, that he's in it to eventually win. He believes that this way and that way is the is the correct path to doing that. And if they're patient and they cut payroll and they do this, eventually they're going to whatever else. And it, at least in fairness, this did transpire once in his tenure. I mean, they did get to the point where they made the playoffs three years in a row, 198 games, might have been the best team in baseball in that particular year. And then things went to hell the following year because the GM made some horrific trades over the winter. But what we've seen since then is a lack of accountability, a lack of passion, a lack of success, to say the least. This is the stuff that I'm criticizing on a daily basis. Does he really, really believe that he's in it to win? I don't know. I can't get inside somebody's brain, but we don't see evidence of it beyond those three years. I can tell you that in those three years, I've never seen him happier. I'd never seen him more excited. I also can share with you, by the way, as long as I'm letting a lot loose here today, that those were the Pirates' most profitable years under his ownership. I'm not guessing at this. Those were the most profitable years under his ownership. So he actually, the team actually, made the most money in 2013 to 15. 
Still figured any of this out? Nope, me neither. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. You're not allowed to repeat any of this to anybody, by the way. This was all off the record. We'll talk Monday. We'll talk Monday.